What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some high-end emulation on the all-new Aya Neo 2. Now, obviously, this is a more expensive device than the Steam Deck, but it does outperform the Steam Deck, and, you know, rightfully so, given the price and the specs of this unit. And straight off the bat, I can tell you right now that this thing is an absolute emulation powerhouse, one of the best handhelds that I've tested so far for emulation, and I'm sure we're going to get better ones down the road. This has handled absolutely everything that I've thrown at it, and in this video we're going to be testing out some PSP, some Wii, some GameCube, some Wii U, some Switch, some 3DS, some original Xbox, and some Xbox 360. I might have missed one or two in there, but we've got a lot to test here. But before we get into it, I did want to go over a few things. Like you just saw, the APU this is using is the Ryzen 7 6800U, and it's backed up by the Radeon 680M iGPU. And with this one here, we've got 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. When it comes to these AYA devices, we have something called AYA Space, which will allow us to kind of change the fan curve. We can also go through and change the brightness. But the main thing here is the TDP. We've got a power saving mode at 11 watts, we've also got a balanced mode at 15 watts, game mode is 22, and from the pro mode we can actually go all the way up to 33 watts. We can adjust it from 5 to 33, and at 11 watts for the lower end stuff, it's going to work fine. If you just want to do some web browsing and some 4K video playback, I would leave it right there. But for most of the stuff we're testing in this video, I'm going to go with the 15 watt preset until we move up to the really hard to emulate stuff then we'll have to do a little bit of adjustment there, but I did want to get that out of the way before we get started here. And there's one final thing I want to address before we move into emulation. I've actually had a lot of people asking about it, and that's the D-pad. Initially, when we saw the first pictures of the Aya Neo 2, I was a little afraid of this D-pad. It's still a bit chunky, and to tell you the truth, I don't like the way it looks, but Aya has done an amazing job designing this D-pad. So, I mean, for fighting games, it's got a really rollable feel to it, and when you need to get accurate for platformers, it'll fall right into place. This thing feels and works awesomely, and we will test it out in this video, but with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some emulation. Jumping right into it with some PSP emulation using the standalone version of PPSSPP, we're at 5x resolution, bulking back in, and yeah, the Aya Neo 2 has more than enough power to emulate this system. I know it's not a high-end system, but some of the harder to emulate PSP games can be a bit taxing, especially with that upscale. Here's Chains of Olympus, and we're playing this just fine. And if you take a look at Afterburner, at 5x, with one of the harder ones to emulate, we're only pulling around 12 and a half watts, and taking the resolution down will significantly lower that power draw. Up next, we've got some GameCube, and there's really only a few we need to test here, like Rogue Squadron 2. Definitely a harder one to emulate on some hardware, but the 6800U definitely breezes through it. Even at 1080p, we've got the Vulcan back end going, and yeah, this is one that's really playable. I also wanted to throw F-Zero GX at it. Still at 1080p, Vulcan back in, and we're on one of the hardest tracks to emulate here, Fire Field. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're at a constant 60, and we're only pulling up to 11 watts. This was really impressive, given that we're at 1080p. And yeah, we could upscale more, but we've got a 1200p display here, and I think it looks really great. Up next, we've got some Wii emulation, still using the Dolphin emulator. We're at 1080p, and I figured I'd use this time just to test out the D-pad. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I really do like it. I mean, it feels very rollable, and it works great for fighting games. I'm not a huge fan of the look, but uh, functionality here is excellent with this new D-pad. And by the way, yeah, Wii games also run at full speed, 1080p at that 15 watt TDP. If you don't mind taking the resolution down to 720p, it'll pull around 12 watts, and at native, you can get by with around 8 to 10 watts depending on the game. Moving up to PS2 using PCSX2, I've got Sly Cooper running here at 1080p, Vulcan back in. By the way, I'm using the development build of PCSX2. Now this game's running great at 15 watts, 1080p, but it doesn't mean that every single game for PS2 is going to run great at 15 watts. With some of them, the harder to emulate stuff, you will have to up that TDP if you want to do 1080p. Here's God of War 2, and I upped the TDP to 25 watts. Now at 720p, we can get away at 15 watts with this game, but if you want that upscale, it's just going to pull a little more. 
When it comes to 3DS emulation on these APUs, it's always been a bit hit or miss, but recently we got some driver updates from AMD, which do up the OpenGL performance on these APUs, and yeah, I mean, we're getting much better performance here. With a lot of the stuff, I was actually able to upscale to 3x. Some of the harder to emulate stuff, you may have to still keep it at native, but we're getting much better performance than we ever have in the past. Wii U has always worked really well on these APUs using the SimU emulator, and this is really no different. We're at a 15 watt TDP here with the Bayonetta 2 at 1080p, Vulcan back in, but again, kind of just like PS2, and really all of these emulators, you may have to up that TDP to get that higher resolution out of certain games. For instance, Breath of the Wild at 720p pulled up to 30 watts in some cases, and that's just really how it is. Now we could always go into the graphic settings and try to lower the resolution of this game here, but I think 720p is kind of a sweet spot, and it is playable, but remember, you will have to up that wattage. Next up, we've got some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded, and I did run into some issues with some other games. I was getting black screen, sound was cutting out, and it comes down to the newer Radeon drivers not being really compatible with the latest version of CXBX. But this is always updated, and if you're really interested, I can make another video just dedicated to that. One of the most impressive things here was uh, Xbox 360 emulation using Xenia. I'm using the Canary build, and we've gotten a lot of optimizations with this build in the last few months. But I mean, just, you know, six months ago, you couldn't even think about running this game here on an APU over 15 FPS. And really, across the board with this Xbox 360 emulator, performance has definitely been improved. Here's Forza 2 running at 60 FPS. This is really awesome. But if you take a look at Afterburner, we're pulling around 30 watts here, so we do have to up that TDP to get these 360 games running well. Now it's time to move over to some PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, 15 watts. The easier to emulate stuff is going to run great at 15 watts. Ninja Gaiden, we've got Tekken 6 here, and I also tested out Demon Souls, which is coming up next. All at 15 watts, you're not going to have an issue running these games at full speed. But as a lot of you already know, when it comes to the RPCS3 emulator, there are some harder to emulate games which do require a little more power, like Skate 3, God of War 3, and even Killzone. But you also have to take a look at the compatibility list over on the RPCS3 website because it even states that God of War 3 isn't fully compatible. So that's one of those games that's just not going to run at full speed on this device and it really comes down to the emulator. But something like Skate 3 with a little more wattage, I've upped it to 25, is fully playable at 60 FPS on the 6800U. And yeah, so far I've had a really good experience with PS3 on the iNeo 2. So in the end, yeah, the Aya Neo 2 handles emulation like a champ. It'll basically do everything that you want it to do. It's just a matter of taking that TDP up and getting less battery life out of it, but that's really the case with any handheld right now. And remember, this does support 40 gig USB 4, so you can connect an external GPU. I've created a video showing off some performance there, and you could definitely up the GPU performance by adding something like that. And you can basically turn this into a full-fledged 1440p or even 4K gaming slash emulation machine by adding an eGPU. But the iNeo 2, first and foremost, is a handheld, and I think it's an absolutely amazing machine. We've got a powerful 6800U APU, beautiful screen, awesome ergonomics. I mean, this thing is really comfortable to hold. I love the D-pad. Don't like the look of it, but it works really, really well. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Aya Neo 2, let me know in the comments below. I plan on a couple more videos. We're definitely going to be installing Steam OS on this thing to see how it performs like that. But until then, if you have any ideas, let me know down below. And if you're interested in learning more or maybe even backing the Indiegogo, links are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.